Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back. Of course, everything's starting to fall already <laughs> to another video. And today coming at you with a collection update. Now, it's been a little bit since I've done one. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a collection update. Uh, just waiting for stuff to come in the mail. Um, you know, kind of taking a little bit more time here in between these collection updates just to kind of let the pile grow a little bit. And, uh, you know, of course, work has been non freaking stop. So uh, it's sometimes it's hard to uh, to get these collection updates in every week between working and trying to do other videos and live stream with you guys and all that. Um, so, yeah. I got a bunch of stuff here, all kinds of different stuff. And before we get into that, if anybody would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below at the PayPal link. Um, no amount is too big, no amount is too small. If you guys just simply want to make a donation to the channel, you may do that as well. And it doesn't have to pertain to just movie reviews. It could be TV shows or video games or comic books or music or random discussions. The sky is pretty much the limit on the paid request. So again. Um, if you guys, that's something you're interested in, click on that PayPal link down below and send it in. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. But for now, let's do the collection update. So first, I got a poster. Uh, let me cover up my address because they just simply reused the original poster tube, which I'm okay with that. And it is the Shout Factory Escape from LA poster. I originally missed out on this one um, when this Blu-ray came out. I just didn't get to it in time and uh, been on the hunt for this one ever since it came out. I love the new artwork on there and definitely wanted to get this poster. Um, I have the Escape from New York poster, so this one definitely complements it. Definitely want to get uh, both of those framed and maybe put in here in the movie room. Um, but that's the only poster that I got. Uh, got some uh, music here. Let's do this. Uh, it's all vinyl records. First up. I uh, got some uh, singles here. Number one, I used to have this one on CD and um, decided to, or not decided, but finally upgraded to the vinyl. Um, I uh, watched this movie, um, I want to say late last month, or I think it was, yeah, I think it was late last month I watched this movie and went on a little bit of a kick for this movie. Uh, this came from overseas. It took a little bit longer to get here because I think they sent it out really late. But I got the original, uh, in the previous collection update, I did get the reissue single, uh, but this is the original release of U2's Hold Me, Three, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, which of course was featured in Batman Forever, which is really awesome. And the B-side on here is just some of the uh, orchestral music from Elliot Goldenthal. And what's cool is this is on red vinyl which is very very nice which is another reason why i wanted to grab this but great song and uh definitely you know wanted to get this for a while finally decided to hunker down and pick it up and then earlier this month this movie celebrated its 30th anniversary and uh, went a little bit on a kick with this one i got some other stuff you'll see later in the update but this is the single to uh, Guitars Cadillacs by Dwight Yoakam, which, of course, was featured in Terminator 2 Judgment Day when Arnold goes into the motorcycle bar. This is the song that is playing when he walks in. I love this song. Uh, finally decided to get the original single for it. Cannot complain. And the next three are uh, bootlegs. Um, these are ACDC bootlegs. Uh, this is part of a five volume set i did order uh well i'll get to that in a second um i have the other i think three coming i just ordered volume i think four three and four one three and four because i have two and five here so first up um again this is part of the the nutcracker series which is um the outtakes from the ball breaker sessions from ACDC. Now, all of these and more were re-released on a 12-inch vinyl. I do have that in the other room, which came with a CD counterpart, um, but I wanted to get the individual releases. So, first up, we have um, Nutcrackers Volume 2, and I have the uh, Beavis and Butthead cover on there, which is another reason why I wanted to get this. 
Um, this has uh, Hail Caesar, which is one of the songs from the album. And then the B-side is a live version of Johnny Be Good, where uh, Bon Scott and Angus Young jumped in on stage with Cheap Trick to play that, which is very cool. And this comes on uh, gray vinyl. Very nice. And then I got Nutcracker 5 and Nutcracker 5. Yes, so the guy that I bought Volume 2, and I think it was this one. No, it was this one. Um, I was supposed to get Volume 1, and the guy sent me this one instead. Now, I already have this one, as you can plainly see. So I purchased this copy first because I didn't have the... This is the uh, American, or yeah, this is the, I guess, the worldwide release. I do have another version of that one. It's a different cover, and it comes with a CD and had a sticker and a magnet and all that. Um, but that was not the ACDC cover. I wanted the ACDC cover. So, um, actually, let me do it this way. So this one I ordered first, which the A-side is Hail Caesar, which is the full version, I think. That one on volume two is like a just a jam version, and then the B side is uh Funk the Honey Roll, which is another jam session. So, this one, um, unfortunately, the top of the sleeve, I guess, got punctured. It looks like I don't know if I actually know the top opens up, never mind. Uh, this one is on purple vinyl, which has got some marbling in there, which is very cool, and then. That was one of the pressings. And then this one is on translucent orange vinyl. And I kept this one. Um, number one, I did pay for it. So, yeah. And then number two, it is a different color. So I was like, okay, I don't mind having, you know, if it was the same color, I probably would have sent it back. But um, it was a different color. So I'm like, you know what? I'll keep both. It's not that big of a deal. So the guy... Um, you know, I got in touch with them, and, and they were like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, they kept apologizing about it. So they were really cool. And they said, do you want a refund, or, or what do you want to do here? I said, I'll keep it because it's a different color than the one that I have. And if you still have the first volume, I'll buy that. And they said, yeah, I'll send you the link for the listing and just pay for it, and we'll go from there. And that's what I did. So that one's on the way. Um and then I ordered uh, two, the other two. So I should have all five soon here. And then again, like I said, I already have the uh, the full length one that came out, you know, on 12 inch vinyl and the CD counterpart to that. So that's cool. But anyway, you know, long story short, I got an extra one. So no big deal. And the rest of these are all uh, regular vinyl. I'm going to start with the uh, record store day stuff. I managed to get. Um, I forgot I had that one, but one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six more of the uh, last month of the June Record Store Day titles. I have two more coming in the mail. Um, those will be in the next collection update. And the only ones that I don't have yet because they uh, really, really went up. In the First of all, the Grateful Dead box set I don't have. That one was already going to be expensive whether it was on record store day or online that one's already really pricey and then there was a two volume police the police stings band before he went solo there was a damn a two volume set of that that came out and that really jacked up in price those are like over a hundred bucks now so those are the only two that i don't have right now coming in the mail but i'm going to try to get them soon and then i'll start working on the july stuff Sorry, I got parched there, but I've um, got six more of the June titles. First up, we have the uh, Stillwater Demos, which this is the music from the almost famous movie. These are the original demos that were done by uh, Peter, Peter Frampton and Nancy Wilson, and this is on colored vinyl. I did not crack this one open yet, so I don't know what color vinyl it is. Um, but again, these are the songs that are featured in the movie, which is very cool. And they just re-released the Almost Famous soundtrack on vinyl. I think there's a Target exclusive pressing that I might have to track down. Um, but that's cool for now. 
And then this one is actually really cool. I'm really happy that this one came out. This is Kenny Loggins at the movies. So this is all the music that Kenny Loggins did for the different movies out there. And it does have, I think, a uh, a new version of Playing With The Boys from Top Gun. But you have I'm Alright from Caddyshack, of course, Footloose, the original version of Playing With The Boys. Um, of course, Danger Zone, also in Top Gun, Meet Me Halfway, Over The Top, and Nobody's Fool from, unfortunately, Caddyshack 2. Uh, but this is, again, really cool. I do like Kenny Loggins, and to have all the, the big songs that he did for uh, different movies on one set is really, really cool. I thought this was a pretty nice release for Record Store Day. So definitely wanted to grab that. Next up, we've got Tears for Fears, live at Massey Hall, Toronto, Canada, 1985. Very excited about this release. I'm a big Tears for Fears fan, especially uh, Songs from the Big Chair, one of the greatest albums ever, in my opinion. And this is from that tour, which is very cool. Of course, all the big hits are on here. Um, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Shout, Head Over Heels, which is my favorite Tears for Fears song, Mother's Talk. Uh, the Working Hour, which is another favorite of mine, I believe. And, of course, Pale Shelter from their first album. And a couple other songs. Mad World was another hit for them from their first album. But great stuff on here. Very happy about that one. And then next up, we got Striper, God Damn Evil. Yes, that is the name of the album. Not the curse word, but the, the phrase. Um, this is on, actually, this one is already uh, cracked open. The Tears for Fears one is on regular vinyl. I will double check, but I'm, I'm 125% sure it's on regular vinyl. But the uh, the Striper one here is on this translucent aqua, which is very cool. Interesting color. Um, this album, when it originally came out, I believe it was last year or 2019. Um, give me a second here as I put this one back. When did this originally come out? Uh, well, it has a 2021 for Record Store Day. Uh, this originally came out, I think, last year or the year before. Uh, they did multiple colors. I just don't have the original pressing yet, but one day I'll get them. But for now, again, Record Store Day, this is cool. Always always like Stryfer, you know, an exclusive release like this, always from them, I always want to grab. So, yeah. But the... Uh, the Kenny Loggins one is on regular vinyl, and so is the Tears for Fears one. I just wanted to make sure. And then next up, last time I got the uh, Heaven and Hell picture disc. This time I have the Mob Rules from Black Sabbath picture disc that they did exclusively for Record Store Day uh, 1 this year. Um, again, love the, the Dio stuff from Black Sabbath as much as the Ozzy stuff. And I'm, I mean, picture discs are cool. I have a bunch of them. I'm not like gaga over them like I am with the colored vinyl. But if it's something like this, Black Sabbath, Dio, classic artwork, I don't mind having a picture disc of it. But great stuff on here again. Fantastic album. You know, again, do not mind picking up, you know, number one, Record Store Day title. Number two, that artwork is still amazing. You know, 40 years later, cannot go wrong. And then the last Record Store Day release that I picked up, we have Albert Collins with the Barrel House Live. Of course, Albert Collins is the uh, blues guitar player in Adventures in Babysitting, but he was a badass in real life. Um, unfortunately, he died way too soon, in my opinion, uh, but always loved his music. Again, got a nice uh, Record Store Day release here. This one is colored. I want to say it's red vinyl, if I'm not mistaken. I did not. Um, pop this one open. Let me see if I can uh, do the old, uh, there we go. It worked. <laughs> the old fingernail trick. Let's see if I can, there we go. It's always the bottom that gets uh, busted. Oh, so it's like a darkish red with some marbling in there, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that one's colored. And while we're here, I might as well crack open the uh, the Stillwater one to show you guys. And then, again, while I'm here, again, if I watch, now that I want to do it to all of these, it won't happen. It will only do the one. 
Uh, nope, I got it. And then once you initially get that seal open, it should be pretty easy to get. Sometimes, sometimes no. Again, I think the Kenny Loggins one is black box. It actually has a download card, but that's okay. I don't need a download card for this. I already have all the music on uh, Apple Apple Music. Yeah, the Kenny Loggins one's black vinyl, but what's cool is the sleeve has like all the movies that the, the songs were featured in. So that's actually pretty nice. So I'm glad I decided to crack that one open. And then let me see if I can get this one. Try not to take too much time here. I still got a, a bunch of stuff to get to, you know, before uh, this video is over. All right. I don't think this one's going to come open. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, this one's not going to, I can't without a knife. I don't have a knife on me. I think this one's red vinyl. It doesn't matter. Um, anyway, uh, next up, got the last three here. These are just ones that I, I picked up. First up, we have the Godfather's Family Wedding Album, which is pretty cool. My parents actually had this on vinyl growing up. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if it got destroyed or lost or whatever, but um, I remember listening to this as a kid a lot and finally decided to... Uh, Pick this one back up and get it in the uh, back in the collection, so to speak. Actually, not on vinyl. My parents had it on cassette. And what's cool is it has all the pictures from the different weddings in The Godfather, which is cool. Um, yeah, actually, it was a cassette tape that my parents had. And we used to listen to it in the car a lot. Back in the 90s when people would do that. So, yeah, good stuff nonetheless. And then this next one I actually picked up at Walmart earlier today. It is a Walmart exclusive. It is Shine Down, The Sound of Madness. This is on uh, Rainbow Splatter Vinyl, which is pretty cool. I do like Shine Down, and this has my favorite Shine Down song, which is Second Chance. So again, definitely do not mind uh, picking up this one. There is a uh, older pressing of this, but it's really expensive to get. So for now, this will work. And then a couple of weeks ago, or yeah, whenever, last week or whatever, week before, um, found this at Target. Been wanting to get this one. It is Pearl Jam 10. Uh, this is on purple vinyl, Target exclusive. I have a, a number of other copies of this. I have a, a red pressing, which is a bootleg. I have the uh, Newberry Comics Coca-Cola bottle pressing. I have a, a reissue, you know, from like 2007 or something. That's on black vinyl. Um, but this one was cool. You know, again, it kind of matches the, uh, the motif of the front cover, which is nice. But one of the best albums of all time, in my opinion, one of the best debut albums of all time. And, um, you know, do not mind picking up another, you know, copy just to play a lot. So good stuff. Again, 180 gram vinyl. This will probably never wear out as long as I take care of it, which I do. So good stuff nonetheless. And then, um, one of these days, I'm going to get an original American pressing. They are pretty expensive to get. Uh, 10 did not come out on vinyl until 1994, and Pearl Jam really had to fight to get it out on vinyl. Um, but you're looking to get a decent copy. You're looking to spend at least 200 bucks to get one that looks decent and plays. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just that. I remember when I first started collecting vinyl, you could get a really good copy for a hundred bucks and then everything got jacked up because vinyl's cool again. Um, but yeah, one of these days I'll get one, just not now. Again, I have like four other copies. I'm good for now. Um, next up, got some, not some, <laughs> but got a bunch of comics here. I rounded up the rest of the Batman um, movie comics. 
so we are good to go. First up, we have the adaptation of the 1989 classic, which in my opinion is still the best comic book movie ever made. Then we got Batman Returns adaptation. And Batman Forever adaptation. So I have the four uh, original Batman movies. I have the comic adaptations of that. And then I also found this one. Um, I did not know that they did one of this, but I grabbed it. It is the Batman and Superman Adventures World Finest adaptation. This is the three-part episode that they combined to make a movie back in the day, um, but still wanted to grab this for the collection. I always did like this. I remember as a kid when this first came out on VHS and renting it from the video store, um, but still cool stuff nonetheless. But yeah, all it is, there's a, again, a three-part episode of the Superman cartoon where Batman came in and teamed up. That's all it is. They just edited them together and sold it on a tape back then. And then I think with the uh, World's Finest, this was free. Um, this is uh, Inyana, in, Inyanu, Inyanu, Child of Wonder, Chapter 1. So, again, this was free. If I like it, I like it. If not, you know, I'll take it to the comic book store. He can do something with it. Um, but, yeah, that was a free beat. And then, um, speaking of Terminator, I got some more Terminator comics. Um, first up, I finished off the T2 movie adaptation. I had Va or issue 2 for a while now. So I got the first issue and the third issue, which is very cool. So, yes, kids, Marvel Comics did an adaptation of Terminator 2 when the movie came out. And it had toys. Go figure. And then, I've been wanting to get this for a while. I got the original, complete RoboCop versus the Terminator story. So we have issue one, which of course led into the video game. Issue two. Issue three. Sorry, RoboCop. There we go. <laughs> and last but not least, issue four. So, yeah, again, I've uh, been wanting to get these for a while, finally track them down. For a good price and i think even the seller gave me a little bit of a deal but finally got the original robocop versus the terminator and i uh, got some i got a bunch of magazines here first up these showed up today got some more issues of michael d pasquale's karate international so first we have this is because on the front it does it just says the volume and the issue number it doesn't say what month it is this is march and april of 1995 so we've got bruce lee on the cover there again these uh just showed up today so i have not had a time or have not had time. I can't talk to look at them. I'll look at them later. Then we have the September October 1995 issue, which has none other than Robin Show from Mortal Kombat on the cover. And I think this one's the next month. Yeah, this is, or no, February, March, 1996. And we've got Bruce on the cover. And then Brandon as the crow is behind him. And then the last one that I got is the April, May, 1997 issue, which has Adrian Paul from Highlander on the cover, which is very cool. Next up, speaking of Mortal Kombat, I got the uh, December 1995 issue of Blade Magazine because I just got the uh, Gil Hibben Raptor model, which of course is the one that Kano used in the Mortal Kombat movie. The seller also threw this magazine in, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, there, speaking of Highlander, there's a little Highlander ad right in the front of the, uh, the magazine there. 
and there is a uh, an article about the blade in here, which is very nice. Very cool knife. Um, I will do a separate video on um, the the knife, the knives that I recently got later, just not now. And then the rest are all Impact Action Movie Magazine. I got a ton of these. I got a bunch more coming. So there's a guy in England that I've been buying these. Most of these, I, I've been buying most of the recent ones all from him. Um, he's getting rid of his collection. I'm buying him a bunch at a time, so I can't complain. So first up, we've got February 92, Rambo on the cover. And on the back, we have Highlander 2, so I can't complain about that. But I love, again, picking these up. I think the poster, I think this has the poster. Yeah, this has a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator 2 poster in here. Um, it is that picture there. Some of them have the poster. Some of them do not have the poster. Then we have April 1992 with none other than Jean-Claude Van Damme. And this one has a Dolph Lundgren poster. Again, that picture right there. We've got May 1992 with Jackie Chan on the cover. And a little thing about Van Damme on the front there. This one, unfortunately... Um, does not have the poster. It somebody took the Van Dam poster, but uh, yeah, this one does not have the poster. But that's okay. I'll I'll get over it. <laughs> then we have June 1992 with none other than Uncle Chuck on the cover, and this has a Patrick Swayze poster. Which is very cool. Not the same image there, but Patrick Swayze. Nothing wrong with that, right? And we have July 1992. We've got Michael Dudikoff. Of course, I'm reviewing his movies now on the cover. And there is a Rocky poster. Sylvester Stallone Rocky poster. Which I think is that image. It is that image there. Uh, the Actually, the Patrick Swayze one, it's that image. But I think there's a couple more at the bottom which is cool. Then we jump ahead to March 1993. We've got Police Story 3 Super Cop, my favorite police story movie. And this has a uh, Street Fighter Jackie Chan poster because of City Hunter. And there's also an interview with Jeff Speakman in here. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out about this one is that... If I can find it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Here's the uh, Jeff Speakman interview. This is part two. I do have part one in the other room, the previous issue. Um, it says here that uh, Ed Parker actually auditioned for the sensei role in The Perfect Weapon, but they went with a actor, obviously. Um, but yeah, he um, he actually auditioned. He read for the part. It says it right here, uh, but he didn't get it, which is cool. So yeah, not a you know pretty interesting. You know, of course, love reading these old magazines because you learn so much. And then we've got June nineteen ninety three with Charles Bronson on the cover, Death Wish five. This was the only time he was on Impact. And on the back, there is a ad for Three Ninja Kids, as it's called in the UK. And then we jump ahead many, many years to February 2002. We've got Ocean's Eleven on the cover. And behind enemy lines, we were just talking about that movie. And this is when they were doing the flip books. The other side is the, you know, Eastern cinema version, which is um, you got Byron Mann on the cover, Billy Zane. And I don't know who the lady is, but that's pretty cool. And then we've got June 2002 with the original... Spider-Man film, and then Obi-Wan in the corner there. The flip is uh, Paper Tigers. I've never heard of that before, but there you go. 
Then we've got January 2003 with The Shield. Never seen it, always wanted to. Heard a lot of great things about it. And then we've got November 2003 with Kill Bill on the cover. Again, still have never seen it. <laughs> and then we've got June 2004 with Kill Bill 2 on the cover. And then we have Jean-Claude Van Damme on the back. This is the 150th issue of the magazine. Then we have April 2005. This is Soul Raiders on the cover. Now, um, a lot of the reason why I grab these is not necessarily for the covers. A lot of them will have interviews with different people, and that's usually why I grab them. I mean, the covers are cool, too, but, you know, I like the, the interviews and such. Uh, and then this one is September 2005 with Serenity. This, the bid went pretty high on this one, I guess, because of Serenity. That's not why I grabbed it. There is, again, interviews with other people and different articles in here. I didn't get it for Serenity, so sorry to disappoint anybody. Then we've got February 2006, which has the anime version of The Seven Samurai. Never seen that version. Then we have April 2006, which has Seven Swords on the cover. And then we have May 2006, which has Gordon Liu, the Shaolin Master Killer himself. There's This is, I believe, part one of an interview with him. And then we have June of 2006, which has some uh, anime on there. I don't know what that is, but still cool. And last but not least, we have October 2006, which has Jason Statham and Crank on the cover which is cool. And then there is an ad for uh, the Macross Saga of Robotech, which was the early Robotech stuff here in America, but still very cool. So again, um, I just ordered, I think like 10 more, and then the guy just listed a bunch more. So slowly but surely, um, will I have every single issue? I don't know. I mean, it would be cool to have every issue of Impact, um, but you know, slowly but surely, I'm, I'm gathering them, which is nice. So moving on, uh, got one video game here. Uh, this just showed up in the mail today. Uh, since I was uh, playing some Sega Saturn with you guys live, I figured, you know, start tracking down some of these games. Um, this is the last year uh, that they did sports games for, well, actually, in general, the last year that they did them. But this is the last uh, hockey game to come out on the Sega Saturn, and it is NHL 98. Now, the reason why I got this is because only in the Sega Saturn version can you play as Mario Lemieux from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mario Lemieux had retired at this point. I believe that's when he had cancer. Uh, it was the first time that he retired, and then he came back. Um, but all the other versions, the, the PlayStation 1 version, the Sega Genesis version, yes, they were still doing Sega Genesis games for 1998's uh, uh, sports ones. Um, but I think 98 was also the last year that they did games for the Sega Saturn, much in the, or Sega Saturn and Sega Genesis, rather. But, um, yeah, this is the only version that you can play as Mario Lemieux. I'm a big fan of him. I like the Penguins when it comes to hockey. So, yeah, you know, good stuff on here. Got it for a pretty good price. You know, the seller offered a little bit of a deal, you know, paid about as much as I want. So I now have another Sega Saturn game in the collection. Again, these are really hard to come by. They're not cheap, so when they are cheap, I like to grab them. The case is a little dinged up, but the game itself is fine. And then I got a bunch of laser discs here. Went uh, and got you know some titles, a couple titles that I really wanted to get, and found some good deals on some stuff. Uh, first up, been wanting to get this for a while. I don't know why this is like a twenty dollar title. I really don't, but it is. This is the widescreen release of Big Trouble in Little China. This movie just celebrated its 35th anniversary earlier this year, or earlier this month, rather, and um, finally grabbed the Laserdisc of it. Again, I don't know why this is like a $20 Laserdisc title, but for whatever reason, it is. Now I have all the John Carpenter, Kurt Russell movies on Laserdisc. I'm going to do a little marathon soon here because escape from new york and escape from la have pretty significant um 
anniversaries this year, might as well fire up the Laserdisc player if I'm going to watch that. And I still haven't watched my copy of the thing yet. Um, next up, got some Michael Dudikoff uh, titles. Uh, just poking around on eBay and found these pretty good, you know, pretty decently priced. So I figured why not. So first up, we have River of Death, which is based on the uh, Alistair McLean novel. Um, pretty cool movie. You know, I actually uh, already pre-recorded this review, so you'll see it soon here. And then this movie is, this is the best way to see this movie because it never had a DVD release anywhere in the world. But it is one of the last canon films that he did, The Human Shield. Um, the first uh, Middle Eastern action film that he did. He ended up doing another one, Chain of Command, which is not a sequel, but another Middle Eastern action flick. But again, this is still the best way to see this movie because it never had a DVD release. I had that on VHS, and I, I ripped it to DVD, and then I got rid of the tape for whatever reason. But if I ever find that one on tape, I'll pick it up again. And last but not least, we have the first Bounty Hunters, which I do like this, of course, with Lisa Howard who was on the Highlander TV series for a little bit. She is definitely nice to look at. Cannot complain. I like her. Really cute, in my opinion. Um, but I like the uh, Bounty Hunters flicks. Bounty Hunters 2 got a release in Japan. I uh, want to track that one down. But the first one got a stateside release. But again, not a bad directed video film. Don't mind this one. And got this. I figured it's Christmas in July. I had the first film on Laserdisc, got this really, really cheap in the collection finally, and it is none other than Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Again, uh, have the first film, picked it up Christmas in July. I'm going to try to squeeze this one in before the month is over. Now, it was listed as like, like new, and then it came and the corner was all scuffed up. The guy didn't really pack it right. Um, I flattened it out for the most part. Uh, I just stack some laser discs on top of it, but it, it's, it is what it is. But again, the disc is in fine shape, so I got to kind of take half of an L on there. But uh, definitely want to grab Home Alone 3. Uh, that's like a $30 laser disc title. I have no clue why. I don't know why some of these laser discs are so expensive. I, I really don't. But that's, again, that's like a $30 laser disc. That is crazy for Home Alone 3, really. But hey, it is what it is. Next up, got a uh, Jack Chan title here. This is Crime Story. Of course, this is the uh, American edit, but that's okay. I really enjoy Crime Story, one of Jackie Chan's most underrated movies. This is a former rental from Blockbuster. I don't know why they took the stickers off. I wish they would have left them on there. But that is a old uh, Blockbuster sticker on there, which is very cool. But again good stuff and the same seller also had this movie and they were both really cheap so i figured why not um we have eastern condors with Sammo hung which is a very very great classic hong kong action film um if you have never seen this one you definitely need to track it down i have this on blu-ray but i figured hey why not get it on laser disc as well you know good stuff on here um this is in of course cantonese with english subtitles and there are some trailers as a bonus material, which is cool. So why not? And last but certainly not least, finally got this. I had uh, previously ordered a copy, and it showed up destroyed. And I, I got this one. This was actually brand new, and it showed up fine. And it is the widescreen edition of Beverly Hills Cop 3. Again, I had ordered a copy before, and it showed up destroyed. So now I have all three of the Beverly Hills Cop movies on Laserdisc. Um, again, not the greatest movie in the world, not the worst movie in the world. There are some things I like about it, but it could have been a lot better, as we all know. And then got a couple VHS here. First up, got a wrestling tape. Uh, this is one of the harder ones to find. This was, of course, one of the uh, WWF 500 series, which only came out, I believe, in Canada. And uh, these are pretty tricky to track down. I got the, I paid about as much as I wanted to. The only thing is the box was detached when it showed up. I just re-glued it, and it's fine. But it is WWF Terminators 96. Again, this is one of the hardest ones to get. Uh, this one still goes pretty expensive on eBay. But, again, I, I was able to grab this one for about what I wanted to pay for it. So very happy to get this one in the collection. Been wanting to get it for a while, so we're good to go. 
And then, since I watched the 90s Spider-Man series, I wanted to get these back on VHS. I had this one and the first one many, many years ago, but got rid of them when I upgraded to DVD. But again, wanted to get them back on tape. And it is the Return of the Green Goblin, which is one of the uh, Disney releases when they got the show. Um, I do have the DVD counterpart. Uh, this did not come in the condition that it was listed in. Uh, there you go. I'm going to let it slide. The tape is fine, but it was listed as being in a better condition, but I'll take it. Um, just want to grab the other ones of that. And next up, got a bootleg VHS. This was really cool to find. It is the uncut version of Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Now, when this came out on VHS, it only came out in the PG-13 cut. But this is a bootleg of the uncut version. Now, I'm sure this is just someone took the DVD and transferred it to VHS. But still cool to have, in my opinion. And got it really cheap, so I can't really complain. And then, I, I don't know why I always do this. I, yeah, I always put the DVDs on the bottom. Because the cases are bigger. But I like to talk about the DVDs first. Because DVD came out before Blu-ray. But I got a couple of DVDs here. First up, another bootleg. This is the Allman Brothers Band uh, TV shows in the 90s collection. Um, this is a bootleg one that I found off of eBay. But it's got a lot of cool stuff on here. So I wanted to grab it. So disc one is MTV Unplugged. The Seven Turns VH1 documentary. Their House of Blues. Um, when they were on the back on TBS back in the day. House of Blues, which was just a live music thing. That's on here. Their Rock and Roll Hall of Fame appearance is on here. And then they did another Rock and Roll Hall of Fame appearance, um, for both in 1995. They're on disc one. And disc two is when they were on Austin City Limits in 1995. So really cool stuff. There is another set out there which has more stuff from the 90s when they were on TV. I want to track that one down soon, but this is still cool to have. And then found this a Community Aid brand new. It got a little water damage, but I can flatten out the, the cardboard because it's a snapper case DVD. But this does not have a Blu-ray release right now. But it is the special edition of Quest for Camelot, which was cool. I remember this as a kid. I remember seeing the trailer a lot. Um, great voice cast in here. Again, brand new, factory sealed for three bucks. You know, can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong to... Uh, to pick this one up so good stuff and then these two were sent to me by rich pierce um he sent me um his movie sector four extraction he autographed the front and also the disc which is cool um he wrote watch better movies take care bud rich so very 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 cool really appreciate that i did not know that he was sending this but he did send me this because he picked it up and had no use for it it is Jeff Speakman's Kempo 5.0, the white belt DVD. This is really cool. I really enjoyed this. A lot of cool stuff on here. There is an introduction to not only Kempo, but Jeff Speakman's history. Uh, it shows the Kempo salutation, just some basic punches and kicks, and some basic drills. Uh, but very cool stuff. I want to grab the remainder of these. Um, you know, and check out the rest of the series. But really enjoyed this DVD. He sent this to me for absolutely free. Appreciate it. And of course, I also appreciate the uh, autographed DVD. And the rest are all Blu-ray. First up, got a wrestling Blu-ray here. Had this one on DVD, upgraded. It is WrestleMania 25. Um, again, now I have all the WrestleManias from 24 to 30 on Blu-ray. That's kind of really all I want um, for now. But still, cool to have. Then, uh, this movie is actually getting a Blu-ray release here in America in September. But I grabbed the Australian release because all the features on here are not coming over to the uh, American release. And plus, I really like this movie. It's one of my favorite Kurt Russell movies. So, it is Breakdown. Again, this is the Australian imprint release. None of these features are making it on to the American release. Um, it will have a different set of features, but very cool. Again, I really enjoy this movie. It's one of Kurt Russell's most underrated movies and uh, very happy 
that not only it got this Blu-ray, but we're getting another Blu-ray, which has more features, including a commentary with Kurt Russell. So that should be really cool. And then I got another imprint release here, uh, Richard Donner film. You'll see another Richard Donner film. Actually, a couple of more Richard Donner films in a minute here. But I also got the imprint Australian Blu-ray of Timeline. This movie's not the best. Um, you know, it's one of Richard Donner's last films. I think from a directorial standpoint, it's good. And I do like Paul Walker in the film. Um, but it's not one of the greatest movies ever made. Now, the reason why I grabbed this DVD, Blu oh, good God, Blu-ray is this has all the features that were on the DVD release. The American Blu-ray does not have any of the features, but this is in the improper aspect ratio. The American Blu-ray is in the original aspect ratio of 235 and 1. Um, they refitted this to 178 and 1. I don't know why they did that, but this has the features but the wrong aspect ratio. I will grab the American Blu-ray sometime soon here. If you can get it for like 10 bucks online, it's really cheap um, to have the movie in the proper aspect ratio. Again, Richard Donner, one of my favorite directors. I want to see the movie how he intended it to be seen. And I only ever had that in full screen on DVD. So yeah. Um, next up, got some more uh, Paramount titles. These are two of the newest uh, Paramount Presents titles. It is the 48 Hours film. So first up, we have the original film. I did have the original Blu-ray release, but uh, this not only has a 4K transfer, but there is a new interview with Walter Hill on here as well. So I definitely wanted to grab this. I wish there was more features. This movie definitely deserves it, but you know how it goes. And then we finally got another 48 hours on Blu-ray. Again, I wish there was more features. There is an interview with Walter Hill, but, you know, what about the deleted scenes and all this other stuff? Probably will not get the glare off of there. There we go. And I don't know why they could just not use the original posters for these. The new artwork is just lazy cut and paste, but oh well. Next up, I got the German release of the 2017 Power Rangers film. The reason why I grabbed this is because here in America, there was a uh, a Walmart and a, I think a Best Buy exclusive. I have the Target exclusive, which came with a comic book, and it was a steel book and it had different art. Um, but the Walmart and the Best Buy exclusives came with a bonus disc on DVD that had extra features. This Blu-ray has all those features, but on Blu-ray. So that's why I grabbed this one from Germany. Um, this is really the completest version that you can get of the of the features. It has everything from the regular release and all the individual um, exclusive store releases are all on a Blu-ray here. So again, do not mind having that, but good stuff. And speaking of Richard Donner, got some more of his work here. First up, I got the double feature of Superman the Movie. The extended cut and the special edition, which is like the longer version. The reason why I got, grabbed this is because the extended cut is the three-hour TV version, which was legendary among tape collectors back in the 90s. Um, that was one that was very frequently traded. That was one that everybody wanted to get. And finally, when uh, Warner Brothers uh, put this out a couple of years ago, I believe this is a Warner Archive burn on demand, but it doesn't matter. Um, when they put this one out in 2017, they finally included the three-hour TV version because that was the version that everybody wanted. That was the longest version of the movie. It had all the extra scenes in it, and people really wanted it. So very cool. And then they just tacked in the uh, special edition, which was when the movie first came out on DVD and such uh, as well. And then finally got this. Uh, it only took till Richard Donner passed away for me to grab it, but I finally got brand new the Superman motion picture anthology 1978 through 2006. I've been wanting to get this set forever. And again, Richard Donner, may he rest in peace, finally grabbed it. So this is all the deluxe editions of the first four Superman films and Superman Returns. So you have Superman the movie, the original theatrical cut, and the expanded edition or the extended cut, whatever you want to call it, same thing. Superman 2, 
the theatrical version and the Richard Donner cut, which I'm not a fan of, Superman 3, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, and Superman Returns, and a bunch of extra features. There is a ex bonus extra features disc. Um, it has a bunch of documentaries on Superman. It has made-for-TV stuff. It has all the Max Fleischer cartoons on Blu-ray and HD, which is cool. And all kinds of other stuff on here. So, finally got this in the collection. Again, been wanting to get it for a long time. And cannot wait to watch these. And last but certainly not least, finally got this one as well. Brand new, very, very cheap. The Goonies, the 25th Anniversary Collector's Edition. I've been wanting to get this for a long time. This has the not only the movie on Blu-ray. And can we get an upgraded Blu-ray, please, with features? The Goonies. One of the most popular movies of all time, and there's no extra features on the Blu-ray, apart from the original DVD features? Are you fucking kidding me? There you go. So yeah, this has not only the movie in Blu-ray, but on Blu-ray, you have storyboard cards, you have the board game, you have the reproduction of the original magazine that came out when the movie did, and a reprint of the 20th anniversary Empire magazine, Where Are They Now? Which is cool. But again, been wanting to get this set for a very long time and finally got it brand new. Same with the Superman set. So that is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this collection update. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to get some more Michael Dudikoff going. Um, I do have, again, a couple. I actually got another paid request. So I'm going to try to take those um, in between the Dudikoff stuff. I'm going to upload maybe one or two Dudikoff movie reviews paid requests one or two more paid requests that way we can get that going and we can also do the paid requests as well so until the next time hope again, uh, can i talk as always thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed the video take care and we'll talk soon see you